So here we are at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. I'm with two of the brightest and the best in the biz, uh, Jason Leffler and Joey Logano. So the average age of the NASCAR driver is somewhere between 25 and 30. And then on average, that winning streak comes early 30s. Both of you seem to have defied the odds uh, on your winning streaks very early in the game. So what is the secret? You know, Joey, you first. How did you, you know, get out of the starting blocks so early and so good? I think for me, you know, I started when I was really young. You know, I think a lot of kids that are coming into the into the NASCAR series now are really starting when they're, you know, six, seven years old. And that's when I started. Um, and when I was 15 years old, Joe Gibbs Racing found me um, and gave me the opportunity to get in really good race cars at a really young age um, and, and really helped my learning curve go a lot quicker than I think it would have been if, if it went a different way. So. You started at the age of 12, which is considered kind of late, late when you look at now. the yeah <laughs> when you look at the the scale now. But for you, you know, do you feel like it come you know starting out any sooner might not have been the right formula for you? I, I think at the time it, it wouldn't have been, but um, by the time I was 12, I wanted to do it so bad. I, I developed such a passion for it that I think that's what helped me later on in the years. You know. And who do you admire? Are there, are there those drivers that you thought, okay, one of these days, you know, I'm going to be neck and neck with you, and then voila, here you are. Yeah, I mean, there, there are, there's numerous drivers on different different levels that I've always admired. Jeff Gordon was one that I always admired growing up, and uh, Tony Stewart was very helpful. I mean, he was helpful in, in getting me my shot down here in NASCAR. So anytime I get a chance to race with those guys, I'm I'm pretty excited. So Joey, what happens to you when you get ready to race when you get in the cockpit, so to speak, behind the wheel. Is there like a real transformation that takes place with you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's, there's two different Joeys. You know, there's Joey away from the racetrack and there's Joey at the racetrack. And, uh, you know, I think that's kind of what you gotta be. You know, you gotta be able to enjoy life for sure. But when you're at the racetrack, that's serious time. You know, that's time you're, you're, you're working really hard on your race car to make it better with your team. Uh, you know, and, and when, before the race starts, I just become really quiet because I think your mind's just going a million miles an hour about all the situations that can happen, what you want to do if certain situations happen, what we can do. Um, and it's just a, a bunch of un unknowns, basically, until the green flag drops. You know, so you're trying to just prepare yourself the best you possibly can uh, for that race and, um, you know, just in case something happens. Because it, you never know what's going to happen. It's like any other sport. Uh, you, you, something can happen lap one. If you get put in a position, you know, last lap of the race, what are you going to do? You know, things like that, they always run through your mind. And that's going through the whole race. You know, you, you know, as you're going 200 miles an hour out there, you're thinking about the next pit stop, what your car's going to do, trying to position yourself for the end of the race. All that stuff uh, is always going through your mind. Uh, and, and that's where you just need to be prepared for all that in the best way possible. Can you ever be too confident? I don't think so. I think you need to be very confident. You know, I, I think there's a line between being cocky and confident. You know, I, mean, I think you need to be humble and, and, and take a step back every once in a while and look at where you are and how lucky you are to be able to do something like this. I mean, how many people want to drive a race car as, as a living and get paid to drive race cars? Everyone. I mean, that's that's, <laughs> Just that's pretty everyone. cool <laughs> in my <laughs> eyes. That's, that's, I, mean, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do um, or anything else I probably can do, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I second that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad thing I mean, to know that's, how that's to do it well. So take me back where this passion came from. Here you and your family are living in Connecticut and somewhere this spark of go-kart racing and dreams of something bigger come along. How did that, what was the evolution of that? It's crazy, you know, I mean, my, my family wasn't into racing. You know, they, they, my father played baseball and basketball all through high school, and, you know, th those are the things I tried first. But I think the fact that I wasn't good at any of them, <laughs> and I found something <laughs> I was pretty good at, I think that was the fact that, I mean, I enjoy winning. I mean, no matter what it is, it, if it's not racing, it's, you know, playing a board game. Whatever it is, you, I want to win. So I think it was something I found that I was good at and I was able to win at, um, and, and I just liked it. You know, I was the kid with the race car bed and all the little matchbox cars and all that stuff. <laughs> that, was, that was this kid here. And, uh, you know, with all the racing gear, all the NASCAR stuff. And uh, I was just, you know, fortunate enough that I was able to follow my dream. And, uh, I mean, I never, ever thought I'd be racing, you know, in the, in the Sprint Cup Series against, you know, like, like you said, Jeff Gordon and, and Tony Stewart and all these guys that, that I watched on TV. You know, Mark Martin. I, wa I watched him on TV. I had his, 
I had his gear, you know? I wore Mark Martin stuff around. <laughs> and here I am racing door to door with him. I, mean, I remember the first time that happened, I was like, that's crazy. You start right next to the guy. You know, wow. it's just, it's not, I was fortunate to have a, a family that was supporting, uh, that would never push me. I pushed them along more than anything. I was like, yeah, let's go racing today. Let's, you know, let's, we should go practice. We go do something, just drive. I just want to drive. So Jason, for you, you know, you started at 12. Uh, yeah. You, the California boy uh, here, where did this spark of race car driving come from? It came at an early age. Um, there's a local dirt track in Southern California called Ascot Speedway, which is really famous for its time. And um, go there every Saturday night with my dad and watch the sprint cars race. And from that moment on, from the very first time I went, I just was into, into racing, all types of racing, watch NASCAR on TV sprint cars, anything I can get my hands on. Do you think your family knew? Uh-oh, he's been bitten by the bug. He's going to want to do this. I, I, my, dad, <laughs> my dad knew. He delayed. He got me a dirt bike and some other things that he, I think he knew were, were going to be cheaper in the long run before he bought me a quarter midget. And um, finally, he just gave in, and it really? just took off from he there. Caved. So he caved in, and he enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, my, same deal. My family, you know, in the early years, we were, we'd go to the races together and travel. And, Parents sacrificed a lot for me to race. My brother sacrificed a lot for me to race. So, um, you know, it's a family sport. And if it wasn't for having a strong family, we would have never made it to this to this spot where we're at now. Was there a moment, do you think, that um, you ever doubted that you'd continue on that pursuit? Or was there a moment even for your dad to say, you know what, I may never get that return from this investment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was, I think there was plenty of moments like that, especially when I was <laughs> crashing every week and flipping the thing over. But, um, you know, I, I, I knew I was at a young age. I knew even when I doubted the driving part of it, I knew I was going to do something in racing, whether it be a mechanic, crew chief or something. I just had that much, you know, I just enjoyed racing that much. So. Uh, it's been very fortunate, you know, and, and uh, all that hard work early on for, for my dad and mom and my family is paid off. You get to this level and, they, and everybody wants your job, everybody, you know, so it's, it's pretty cutthroat when you get here. It was a reality check, you know, it, it's tough to stay here. 